The date was February 20th, 1953. With Cardinals owner Fred Sy facing tax evasion charges, he sold the ball club to another St. Louis icon, Anheuser-Busch. Now congratulations to an order for you, Colonel Bush, for the fine thing that you have done in, in uh, buying the St. Louis Cardinals. Well, thank you very much. We're delighted to be the owners of the Cardinals, and we're going to try to give the fans everywhere the finest baseball that is known in the United States. The eccentric Gussie Bush wasn't much of a baseball man, but with Cy considering all options, Bush jumped in to prevent the Cardinals from moving to Milwaukee or Houston. Gussie grew to love the game and took pride in being the Cardinal owner. St. Louis in 1964 is celebrating the 200th anniversary of its founding. The club hadn't won the pennant in nearly 20 years, but in 1964, they snapped that two-decade drought and won the National League. And the Cardinals, one strike, come on! If you've never heard Mr. Gussie Bush excited, you just heard him over my shoulder. Let's go! Get him out! A high pop ball! Sixty-four became the first of six NL pennant winners and three world champions during the brewery's ownership. Gussie, to you, Whitey, to you, Darrell, to you and all your teammates, Joe, to you as general manager, the trophy that says you're champions of the world and you deserve it. Uh, thank you, boy. Thank, thank you very much, my friend. That's marvelous. The brewery also purchased Sportsman's Park from the St. Louis Browns, renaming it Bush Stadium. Then in 1983, Anheuser-Busch took opening day pageantry to a whole new level, sending the world-famous hometown Budweiser Clydesdales around the warning track for the very first time. AB sold the club in 1996, but the two legendary brands remain synonymous. And it all goes back to February 20th, 1953, the day Anheuser-Busch bought the Cardinals, and a day that changed Cardinals history. For Cardinals Insider, I'm Brett McMillan.